so happy today. We're having the one and only Phoenix is going to be in a in a chair talking to me. So Phoenix, I know him also for years and years and years, but funny enough, I never met him until last year when I met him for the first time in England when he started to do lectures through France, Spain, and came to England. Absolutely amazing guy, such a nice guy. I was so surprised, make my day. I had a great time. He stayed in my place for a couple of days. He did amazing lectures in Magic Circle. It was absolutely superb. Now, we all know him about Phoenix, but some people know him about Alfredo Ruiz, so you will have to explain what it is, what's the connection between the two. Uh, now, I just can't wait. Let's introduce my good friend, Phoenix. Hey, how are you, my friend? Welcome to my office, and I want to welcome all so I'm happy to be with you and to see you again. You know, last time we saw each other around four months ago in London and some other places in, in England. And I'm very happy to meet you again. That was a pleasure. Honestly, Phoenix, I had such a great time with you. Um, the reason is because I knew you from a reputation, but I never met you personally. And I, I remember when you called me and you said, oh, I'm doing a lecture. Have you got some date in France you could put me in? And I, I, tr I think I got you three dates. But mm -hmm. it, was such, it was so exciting to meet you personally because I know so much about your work, but I didn't know about you. And when you came to see me in, uh, in England, I was like really surprised um, because you was very friendly, really laid back, really relaxed guy. And obviously magic wise is like too good, you know? But it was nice to see uh, to, to something I, I was not, not expected because I know it was a a nice guy, but it's nice to, to meet someone like that and have a good connection straight away. So uh, it was a pleasure for me. But hey, today is all about you. So I just want to ask you plenty of questions for now. And the first question, very quickly, before we're going to talk about the code, because I just see the code also on your table. Amazing yes. book, that's what we're going to talk about. But I want to, uh, first question, could you tell us a little bit about where you come from? Because I know you come from Mexico, but when you started Magic, when did you start it? And also the confusion about the two names, Alfredo and Phoenix. Maybe you could explain that to us. Okay, first I'm going to answer the second question. My real name is uh, Alfredo Ruiz. That is my real name. But I just uh, wondered if I changed my name. I think it could be better because, you know, Alfredo Ruiz is a very common name in Mexico. So I had to get a stage name. This was about 35 years ago. And my name, Fenik, okay? It means coin in German, a one cent coin, because I started to perform magic just with coins. Later on, yeah. I started to study card magic, you know, and since 30 years ago, card magic is my favorite kind of magic. So Fenik is my stage name. And that's the way I would like to call me because I am a magician, you know, and I have to use my stage name that is Fenik. Okay. The second I, answer... Okay. I understand. So next time, from now on, I will call you Fenik all the time. Yeah, please. So, uh -huh. And the, the second answer is the following. Uh, I was born in Chihuahua City, the north of Mexico. And we lived here for three years. When I got four years old, my parents moved to Tijuana, Baja California, to the very north of Mexico. Then we moved to San Diego. I grew up in San Diego. And then when I got 16 years old, we came back to our hometown, which is Chihuahua. And now uh, I'm still living in Chihuahua, but you know, I have lived in several places thanks to my, because I travel a lot. My teachers in magic were three guys. The first one is an amazing guy. He still lives. His name is Baltasar Fuentes. Uh, he is the teacher of most of the Mexican magicians, of the majority of the Mexican magicians. And also my second teacher was Larry Jennings. I met Larry Jennings when I was 19 years old. Uh, and I studied with him for around eight years or eight years. Now, Phoenix, hang on. That, to have a teacher like Larry Jennings, 
that's something else, right? This is amazing. So yes, Larry it, Jennings was your teacher or your mentor? Oh, yes. Yeah, Larry Jennings and Michael Skinner. You know, uh, Larry oh, Jennings wow. introduced to me Michael Skinner. So I had, uh, I was very lucky, you know, imagine having a mentor like Larry Jennings for eight years. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I used to live in his own house. Uh, having a teacher like Mike Skinner in Las Vegas, I spent so many times with him in Las Vegas while he was working at the Golden Nugget and I was working as a magician at Caesar's Palace. So, when so did yes, you, I did, was... When did you leave it? You, did you actually left uh, um, Mexico to go to America? Is that correct? Uh, yes, is... because we, were, we are very close to America, you know, so I can go and go and come back, you know, uh, as many times I like, you know, because we're very close. It's just three hours driving from the United States, my hometown. Oh, and yes, okay. it was easy to go to travel to Los Angeles, no, no problem, to meet Jennings. I stayed there in his house for weeks or maybe months, and I did this for about eight, eight years. So yes, it was an incredible experience of having one of the most talented car magicians in history of magic as a teacher. So he taught me a lot of things. He taught me a lot of uh, things that he already published, but also things that he never published, you know, so I'm lucky. Wow, that's an amazing, amazing story. I mean, I wish yeah. I could have had Larry Jennings as a professor. Yes. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah, as you know, I admire Jennings so much because he was a smart guy, very intelligent guy. I can tell you, he used to create card magic every day, but every day. It was amazing. His brain was amazing. Uh, you know, the videos of Larry Jennings that we see now, uh, uh, they don't match the real skill that he really had because those videos are recorded when he was already already ill, you know, yes, okay. old. Got you. but uh, I got lucky because I met Jennings when he was at his prime, when he was 51 years old, okay? So did you actually so I could... perform during shows and things like that, like a proper shows and a gala show? Did you see him perform? Yeah, of course. I saw him at the Magic Castle for performing for real audiences, for regular audience. I mean, uh, layman. He was great, very charming, very yeah. precise in his movements. Uh, I never saw him committed a mistake in front of the audience. Never. Right. And he used to do difficult routines for laymen, not, not only commercial routines, but I mean, technically, he used to do very difficult routines with a uh, kind of smoothness that is unmatchable, you know? Yeah, yeah. And also, I, I saw him perform several times for magicians, and of course, he always killed all the magicians. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was a great experience. He, he showed me, he taught me how to create the effects, how to think about creating the effects. He showed me how to practice. Uh, he showed me that we have to practice for hours every day, no matter how old you are. Mm -hmm. And I'm still practicing. I'm still practicing magic, as he told me, at the least four hours a day. I still do it. Yeah, very good. Yeah, so, so uh, and I was you, lucky. Yes. Yeah, very lucky. Incredible, incredible. But so, would you say you, your magic? I know you do both stage and close up. Do you enjoy more close up than stage or parlor magic? I guess you know first. Well, I think it's a different kind of magic because the approach is very different. My favorite is close-up magic because I think in some ways it's more challenging and more sensitive, you know, because people are very close to you. They react very, very, I think they react, react stronger. I think if they don't like something, they will let you know it immediately. Mm -hmm. If you do a mistake, it's a different kind of mistake that you can do doing close-up magic than stage magic. But I also like doing the stage magic, you know. I used to do a full top act with manipulation. I did it for years at the Magic Castle. 
but I quit the dog manipulation because it was very hard traveling with the dogs, you know, in the airplane, hotels, finding the right place so they can uh, let you having the dogs in a hotel mm. or flying them, you know, from city to city or country to country. So I quit the dogs. Now, yes, I still do uh, the stage magic, but most, most of my stage magic is mentalism. I do some kind of manipulation also, but most of my stage magic is mentalism. Oh, you see, I didn't know you was doing dog magic. I would have uh, no idea. Oh, yes. That. Wow. Yes, yes. Uh, you, you know, the first time... Do videos of that? Do you have videos? Yeah, I YouTube? have videos, yes, of course. I will check that. Phoenix with dove. I will put yeah, that exactly. <laughs> and Phoenix, you know, because we know, obviously, you're Mexican at, at the base. Do you think it's a big difference performing in Mexico for Mexican audiences? or against American audiences. And I will come also to the English audiences. What do you think is well, the difference? Or is it not I different? Know, I think there are some kind of differences, but I don't think there are a lot of difference, you know? I have performed in several countries, as you know, and I find out that if you do a good show, everyone will react very strong no matter what nationality they are. Mm. Uh, maybe the culture, yes, is different, maybe. Maybe the language is different, but... Would you change some gags, some lines? Would you change a little bit of a, of a gag? You would change the, the lines in Mexico, the gag for, for you would do for Mexican, oh, yes. the American or something like that? I think that can be one of the main difference, the language and the sense of humor, because it's different. Yeah, I was thinking okay. humor, yeah. So, yes, it, you cannot joke as you do in Mexico, as you can do it in the United States, you know? Maybe I have the experience of performing several times, several times in Spain, and yes, the humor is different from the Mexican humor, even if, even if, if we speak Spanish as the Spanish people does, you know, but the sense of humor is different from country to country. So yes, sometimes you have to change your lines, even your gestures. So uh, the jokes with um, in Mexico, you could joke a lot about Trump, right? Uh huh. <laughs> well, yes, you know that that is a topic that everybody talks about it. But you know, as an artist, I cannot be really be involved in that because I travel, you know. Yeah, of course you travel. I mean, it's, you have to. You have to know where to draw the line, right? Exactly. You have to be careful. So, Ma Magic yes. uh, Magic Castle. I know you work there. How many years you've been working in Magic Castle? Well, I have been working at the Magic Castle for thirty years. Okay, oh. since I was twenty-one. Now I am fifty-one years old. So I've been there for thirty years, performing in every room. Every yes. year, you go every year. Every year or every six, six months, yeah. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. So you yes. did the Paro and the close-up. And yes, and I used to do the stage at the palace, you know, but when I quit the dogs, I never went back to do the stage. So right now I only do the parlor, I do the close-up magic and also bar magic. And uh, what, what, what do you think is the best there? Well, what do you what do you like the best? Working at the little close-up room or the parlor room? You know, I I I I like both. I think there are some kind of difference. In one room has some advantages from the other room. Let's speak about the close-up room. The close-up room I think is very good at the at the Magic Castle because it's a small place. Uh, people are seated in the very right way they should be seated while watching close-up magic you don't have so many bad angles uh, so i uh, and people is very very close to you that's what i like that people is about a feet away from you so i love to have people very close to me when i perform and and in the parlor room you have even more control about angles and i think it's much easier to work at the parlor because people is about two or three yards away from you, right. it's, you know, uh, 
and you have more crowd, you have more people, so they react very good. So I like both, but my favorite of close is close up magic. I think close up magic will be always more challenging. Mm -mm -mm. I mean, I saw I saw some of your stuff you do. I mean, it's it's kind of good to see both uh, both things from you because I saw you lecturing in the magic uh, circle, obviously. And the thing you show it to me in my house or in the pub together, uh, some of the stuff are incredible technically. But when you do a lecture, is is everybody could uh, pick up something? Is that correct? You don't try to do something too difficult, and you because you know most of people will not be able to do it. But you, I mean, we know your stuff is incredible, and things you do is skillful and amazing. But you have both facets of your of your work. Some could be yes. more and some would be very difficult. Correct. Right? Yes, and speaking about a lecture, I think that when you lecture to magicians, you have to show them respect, you know? You have to mm. know that not all have developed a very good level of skills, because sometimes there are uh, uh, magicians watching the lecture and, and they have been in magic for only a couple of years. Yeah, Sometimes can. you have experts watching your, your lecture, so you have to mix, mix both. Maybe you can give them something easy to do, but professional, you know, with good with, with quality in the construction of the effects. And sometimes you can give them something with high technical skill, but what I do in my lectures, I mix both, you know, because when you go to see my lecture, I want them all to learn at least one thing, you know, at least one thing. So I, I always uh, try to make the lecture easier by choosing very nice effects. If I want to show the hard technique, maybe I, I'll do it after the lecture. Yeah, but also I think Phoenix Way well, is nice in your lecture because you do a few things that uh, wow, you know. And I think for, for people, even, even if you have done magic for years, it's nice to be to show, see some, somebody like you. It's, it's very, uh, um, it will influence you and things. If you, you maybe think, oh, wow, I may be able to do that, you know, so it's encouraging because I remember seeing maybe like Gary Kurt when I was 18, 19, and I thought, wow, you know, it was, blew my mind off. So it's probably young people see you, they, they, they go, wow, but they, they know they could do that by working hard. You know, you, you, inf you will influence people in the right direction, maybe. So it's a, it's a good way to do something difficult and show something. Yeah, I you know, yeah. because... I, I think is a lecture is not uh, the right spot to show off, you know? Yeah. I think the right spot to show off is in your professional show. But in a lecture, in a lecture, you are uh, playing the role of a teacher. You are teaching magic, you know? So you really want to teach. And if you start to do my center deals, my fifth deals, my invisible passes, I don't think the majority of the magicians will be able to do them, you know, or to learn them because you need decades, decades, I mean, to do this well, okay? So that would be more than 51. And uh -huh. But there are a lot of beautiful tricks, fuller tricks that are not as hard to do. You can show them in the lecture and they will learn them in a week or two weeks. And now they will have that gift that you gave them in the lecture, something that they will really use in the professional performances. Yeah, correct, very good, very good, I really liked it. But no, I, I know it, it's amazing, the things you do is absolutely amazing, so uh, uh, very good. Maybe I'll have to have you as a teacher one day, one-to-one, -one, and you could teach me hard stuff so I could do, right? And I yeah. would <laughs> to do all my shit. <laughs> <laughs> now let's talk something I'm, I'm so excited because I see the book in front of you I never seen yes. it because when you lectures in England you, you did another book right was it on download but I never see a copy of a book so I'm seeing it now so you look absolutely yes. amazing so I'm going to ask you to talk a little about it when the project started and, and have you done other, I mean, have you done other book before haven't you you got other stuff but this is like a big bible of, uh, of stuff right Yes, exactly. Yes, you know, uh, this book for me is very important because this book is my first hardcover book, okay? 
Uh, I started to work on the book when I was 22 years old, you know, trying to find my own theory about the procedure of magic, you know, about the procedure of the deception of magic. So it took me several years to put together a new theory about magic, a procedure that everyone will be able to understand. Doesn't matter if you are a beginner and if you're even an expert, this theory is going to help you a lot for the better understanding of magic. Once you read this theory, you will be very objective in your own analysis about the routines that you are doing now. Wow. No matter if you are a professional. Uh, if you are a beginner, it's going to help you to understand the procedure of magic, but in a very quick way. Mm. Also, it contains the book, 27 of my favorite performing pieces. So I'm sharing with the audience, I mean the magicians, the routines that I really do when I perform at the Magic Castle, when I perform at nightclubs, when I perform for real, for the real world. So it's a nice book because you will find a good chapter about my theory that I call it the code, the magic code. And also you will find several routines uh, in all the levels speaking technically. So do you think the rating of tricks between fairies is what to a, a third of fairies and, and a two thirds of tricks? Or would you say it's half half? Well, you can find all kinds of tricks. You can find tricks that you can perform them even if you are not a card worker because there are, I have a couple of self-working tricks. I have also tricks that they are medium skill tricks. And of course, there are, there are a couple of tricks that are knuckle busters. You can find card magic. You can find coin magic. You can find even a torn and restored business card that I did it in your backyard at your house. Do you remember? Yes. I performed it for you. And you, you can also find a new way to making a pencil penetrate uh, through a bill, you know? So it's a very good book. And speaking about magic, it contains beautiful, beautiful dark magic. And they're not only tricks. They are full routines. They are fully explained. They contain all the patterns that I really use in them. And you can find also the psychology, which is behind every routine. And drawings, Phoenix, what sort of drawings? Are they hand drawings or are they photos? Yeah, uh, I can show you uh, a lot of illustrations, wow. as you will see oh. in every page. A lot of illustrations. We had a uh, my friend Jorge Betancourt, Jorge Betancourt did uh, 215 illustrations from the book, so it will be very easy to understand the book. That looks awesome, honestly. Mm. Yeah, and you can find it in, in the English version, yeah. you can find it in the Spanish version, and also I have a good news. Friend. Magic Dream from Paris, they just bought the rights, oh. thanks to you, thanks to you. <laughs> so that's Magic, Magic Dream, is that correct? Yeah. Magic Dream is going to publish it? And Magic they are, they are publishing the book, I think, in October, in French. Oh, wow, very good news, that's good. Yeah. Because you not only have all the French, but all the, the Canadian as well, uh, Francophone, yes. so it's quite a lot. Oh, well, well done, you will do very well with that. And, and obviously you will see the link there, so where you could buy it and they could purchase the, the, the book direct to you, correct? Or is it yes, just, correct. are you selling it to Murphy or other people or not? Or well, no, uh, I, no, let me tell you, the, the, the guys who are selling the book in the English and Spanish version is Murphy's because they have the exclusivity. Okay. That's and they are distributing okay. the book all over the world in the different magic shops. But the exclusivity, it, it, it's owned by Murphy's in the English and Spanish version. 
Okay, so if I want to buy it, they have to go to the local shops or by Murphy, but no... You, you, can, you can buy it in the local shops, you can buy it in Penguin Magic, Vanishing Inc., everywhere in the world. Perfect, I thought you will sell it direct, but you sell it through uh, uh, Murphy's. First, totally understand that. First, uh -huh. understand that. And so just coming to parallel of that, would it be possible, please, Phoenix, can you show us tricks from the code? Okay, I'm, I will be glad to do it, of course. And before you do that, Phoenix, I, I, I'm, you know, the problem I had when people showing tricks, I, I shout and I go screaming. And because we're on, on Zoom, it will come back to me. So I'm not going to say anything, but remember, I will be screaming in my head in silence. Okay. So it's up to you. Go ahead. Okay, no, it's okay. It's okay. You just can watch us. I'm going to stand up so you can see my hands very well. And we're starting watch here uh, using uh, some cars. We can mix them, we can cut them, doesn't matter. And what I'm doing here, I'm going to strip out two kings. And let's do it with the black king so you can see them. Here's the first king and the second black king. Watch. The two black kings, very clearly, with no fast or false move. I'm going to leave them right here resting on the box. Now here, the spectator, they can select a card and they can sign it, of course, okay? Once they sign the card, you throw the card and you split the deck, uh, let's say, in a half. And watch very clearly, the chosen and the signed card is being lost there. No control in the deck. Now what I'm doing here, I'm going to try to find your card, but I will let you know that I am not finding your card. The black kings are the ones who will find your card, just with a slap. Yes, the kings are gone completely. And believe it or not, Etienne, they have traveled all the way down into the middle of the deck. Here's the first king, oh my God. Where's the second one? Oh, excuse me. I think I slapped the pack very hard so the second king went lower into the pack. So here we have the two black kings and I'm going to ask them to find your card. Find Etienne's card. Find please Etienne's card, watch. I'm going to place the kings as you can see and I'm going to bring a little piece of cards from the middle. Watch the kings. I'm going to cover the kings with these little cards and I'm going to insert them very clearly in different parts of the deck. Now I'm going to make a magic pass, just very slow. And I'm going to ask the kings to find your card. Find the card please now. Yes. And believe it or not, Etienne, here, now they are together. And they just got a card, which is exactly the chosen one, the three of the spades. Yeah? <laughs> no, good clap, baby. Very good, very good uh, sandwich method. Wow. And even put my Thank glasses you. because it's warm in your face. No, he wants to watch you close, baby. <laughs> <laughs> that was very good. So I've asked him uh, a book. And uh, what's the name of his trick called? Do you have a name for it? It's, the name of this trick is Kerigma Searchers, Searchers, I mean. I think it's a very good trick. It has the roots on the Jennings trick, which the name is the Searchers. But I have changed all the procedure and it also has a new principle in card magic that will be, be very interesting for all the magicians, which I call it the double tilt, which is a new technique that you can use in several routines. Very good, very good. Now, listen, uh, because it's half time, uh, I got to be a surprise for you, right? Okay. Now, this is not a trick. This is, I got 10 cards, and on the back of this card is a little question. So it could be, question you want to answer and maybe a question you don't want to answer right okay. so you have one joker the joker said if you don't answer you go joker 
and I prove a card in your hair, right? So I'm going to ask you to select three cards. So I'm going to deal the cards on the table using your move. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, no, no, no. stop. I, stop, and stop. stop, one stop. more time. Okay, so now you got the three cards. <laughs> now let us see the question. Oh, a magician you don't like. Any name you want to, to name it, somebody you don't like, you hate the magician. A magician that I don't like, well, the answer is the lazy magician. That's a great answer for me. I'll keep that in the box. That was your smaller fee for a party, the very, very small fee you had for a party. It could be 20 years ago, even uh, 10 years ago, whatever. Very small when you started with a of like one dollars, one shilling, whatever. No, I, I don't get the question again, please. Again. You, must, you must have done a show being well paid, but did you have a, have you done a show with very little money, like maybe 10 pounds, 20 pounds or something? Did you have a very, very small fee attached to a party you done or not? No, I don't. No? Okay, we plus this one. Uh, did you get drunk at a party? Did you ever get very drunk at the party? If I get drunk at the parties? Have you ever done, have you ever been drunk at a party? Have you never done a party totally drunk? Yes, I have done uh, parties being drunk, you know, with, with the, when the environment is happy and everybody's playing and everybody is dancing. Yes, I drink a little bit. Okay, so we all done it. And the last one is, how many girlfriends did you have? In my life? Yes. <laughs> and we got time. <laughs> okay. Gorilla, I that, do not know that why. That me. That was fine. I could see it was, it was no many. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I cannot tell because I don't know. Okay. That's fine. That was really good. <laughs> Now tell us, uh, I was a, a couple of other questions I want to really ask you about. Um, and one of them is uh, about your favorite tricks. Do you have a favorite tricks you really like? Do you like to perform all the time or not? Favorite tricks? A favorite trick or favorite routines? Favorite routines, yes, excuse me. Yes, uh, my favorite routines are a uh, round trip, which is a transposition of four aces and four kings into the pockets. I think that is one of my favorites. The other one is Miracle. I have uh, the, the Mexican Revolution. And I love to do some tricks with the memorized deck. And one of my favorite pieces is doing my gambling routine. Uh -huh. All right, okay. Very yeah. Nice. And, yes. And, and, and a favorite book? Do you have a favorite book you would recommend to people or not? A, a favorite book? Yeah, a favorite book. Yes, my favorite book is the classic magic of Larry Jennings. Ah. I think it's one of the best books ever written about card magic. I think it, all the magic which is printed there is very elegant, very well thought out. So I think the classic magic of Larry Jennings the complete works of Derek Dingle. And now I am reading a book which was written by a French magician and I'm starting to like it, the book a lot. And I think the author, his last name is Pratier. Yay! But I got, but I, I got it in French and I hope it'll be translated in English as well one day. <laughs> yeah, I'm, st I'm studying uh, the current to the bottle, which I think is a miracle. Oh, very good, man. The one in yeah. French, yeah? The one from... Uh, yeah, you gave me it in French, but I, here in Chihuahua, I have my friend who, he lived in France for eight years, so he speaks French perfectly, so he's helping me a lot. Oh, great, that's good. So you could, uh, you uh -huh. could really translate. Now, a couple yeah. of things also I want to uh, be interested to know. I know on Saturday, we're this on the 23rd of March, uh, we're going to be doing something together. Yeah. I'm very yeah, you know, looking forward to do that. That's a very important issue because let me tell you that here in Mexico, we just started the biggest magic movement 
in our country in Mexico. We are re we are reunited all the magic clubs from Mexico, all the magicians, and wow. now we have a lot of people from all over the world supporting this new Mexican organization. The name of the organization is Magico, like Mexico, but Magico. Mm -hmm. And we are going to open a new Academy of Magic, a big one, with all the celebrities of magic around the world to support the Mexican magic. And of course, we want to thank you because we know that you are going to be with us. Uh, you are going to teach us magic. And also we have a lot of celebrities like Armando Lucero, like Michael Kaminskans, like Jeff McBride, you know, a lot of Michael Hart, great. all the celebrities. We're going to invite them to join us to help to make the Mexican magic grow more. That's what we want to do to make Mexico an important uh, country speaking about magic. So, uh, uh, Phoenix, uh, was it because originally you was going to do a, a, a big lecture in July, right? Was it a big mm -hmm. lecture or a convention in July? A convention. And obviously due to the corona has all been cancelled. So that's a kind of a replacement, but it worked out kind of nice if you get so many people around the world be able to come and join you, right? Yeah, let me tell you about that convention. That convention, I am involved in that convention. Uh, the guys who are organizing Enigma, that is the name of the convention, Enigma. Okay. They, they are Jorge Betancur, senior and junior, Alejandro Hinojosa, also our friend Edward Sanchez, and so many more guys. Uh, this convention is the most important magic convention in Mexico, and it's done every July. So, but you know, right now, thanks to the coronavirus, we are not able to do it in this summer. So we are moving the convention in November and we are uh, doing maybe a smaller event, you know, we had to, mm -hmm. but uh, we're still doing the convention and this uh, organization about, uh, speaking about Magico, Magico belongs to Enigma, okay? But yes, you're right. I am involved in the organization of Enigma and I'm very proud about being part of this project because this project has helped a lot the development of the good Mexican magic. And of course, you are going to be one of our teachers and one of our guests. So we are going to be very proud of having you teaching us your best tricks or your best trick in a lecture that we are doing on this next days. I, I can't wait. I think it's going to be a good fun. And uh, uh, yes. puedo hacer in español or in inglés? You can do it in any language because if you do it in English, we will have a translator. And if you do it in Spanish, I'm going to be your translator because I know very well how to just speak Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> so, meta, meta, yeah? Uh -huh. Exactly, exactly. Uh, I can't wait to do that. So uh, to kind of conclude a little bit on, uh, on what we've been talking about, what's your uh, future project uh, in, when you see yourself doing after all this problem with coronavirus? I guess we're going to be stuck for a few months again uh, still. But have you got any other project uh, going back to the Magic Castle? We see one of them uh, selling. Yes, the uh, of course, always. My always in my projects are my performances in the Magic Castle, so I will do it again. I have a lecture tour in the United States. I also have a, a project, a very good project in Las Vegas, which I expect that is going to expand worldwide. And it's about close-up magic with a, with a tequila brand. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to make a couple of videos because, you know, when I tour in Europe, they love my road routine you know yeah. Yeah. and everybody is asking me to put it on video and to sell it in a lecture so i think i will do it again with murphy's i'm going to uh, make this download with the ropes so everyone will be able to learn this road routine because believe me i i never expected I that they would like it the road routine a lot you know 
Yeah. Uh, uh, they love the routine. I have to to share it with the magic world. Yeah, very good. That's a good project. I can't wait. As I, like I said, I I seen it and it's amazing. So you should yeah. watch the video. So that's very really good. And um, and would you like to be come back to France and and England and maybe Spain to tour again in the near future or not? Definitely, definitely. I I would love to come back to Europe. Of course, to France, to England, to Spain, to I have some offers for Holland and Germany, you know. Yeah. Germany. So yes, I will go back to to Europe maybe next year, maybe on 2021. Maybe when the book is got is finished in French, you should take the opportunity to tour France. That's yeah. what I'm thinking, you know, because uh, once the book is done, is printed in French. I think I must, I must go back to France. Yeah, yeah. And look, you'd be more than welcome to stay at my place again because I had such a great time with you. So I'll Beautiful go, place. I want to say... Uh, 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 Etienne, Etienne, yes. can, can I borrow your collection cars when I go back? Yes, of course. <laughs> because let me tell you that Etienne has some beautiful cars, you know, collection cars that you must see them you, you must show my, your you cars there are beautiful. Car and go around but you can't take you can't probably need a bigger car to put all your books so you get the four <laughs> free peugeot you know four free peugeot my old cars is very famous in uh, in mexico in mexico okay. is a club for four free peugeot and I, I always get communication with them and it's a quite popular no popular car but it's a big club and it's still quite a few four free peugeot in mexico Okay, there we okay, go. Very and they modified, they repainted it. Uh, and, and also, I, think I, I will like to have again as dinner the curry that you bought the other night. You know? Yes. You remember, oh, that curry was fabulous. I'll bring some one day, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> it was but, very, very, very good. But no, listen, I had such a great time with you. So it was a pleasure talking to you. And you know I love you, um, Phoenix. So my heart, my kid, a bezo and, and brasso. And I will see you soon. And I wish you well with a card. And I'm sure you will sell ton of it because it's absolutely amazing book. So good luck. Hasta luego, amigo. Hasta Fet luego. And, and I'll see you in Mexico. And then I will see you in Enigma. Okay. Vale. Hasta luego. Bye. 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 Oh, my God.